can't quit you, babe. Oh, oh, are you there? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, this motor, um, it, uh, we got a, uh, something wrong. I, uh, uh, looks like valve train damage, <clears throat> although I can't ascertain the damage, so I get the valve covers off, but that's next. And, uh, Hope's just bent push rods. Hope everything kept clean. It only popped once. I shut it right off. I didn't pop. I knew it was no good. This whole thing started with this motor. We played this all wrong. Uh, the guy bought it from this girl and her father. And they didn't know whether it was a uh, hydraulic or solid camshaft in it. Flat tap it. So... Uh, ever since then, I've been just, you know, setting it to zero lash and then leaving it, running it, see what happens. Well, it started to clack after, you know, a thousand miles. So I took it down to lash and then a quarter of a turn. I guess that was the wrong way. But before, when I had it, it, the, you know, I'd set the lifters or the zero lash and I'd rotate the push rods till they stopped. And then when I came back to it, some of them had bled off. I figured, got to be hydraulic. Well, damn, I wish these people knew. It just has cost, you can't believe how much problems, time. Because um, we put a lot of parts in this motor. This was nothing like this. You know, we put it. MSD ignition on it, MSD dis billet distributor, Holly 570, Street Avenger, you know, carburetor, um, you know, just a lot of stuff. And uh, never knowing what it was, you know, I, I was guessing, guessing, guessing. Well, I might have guessed wrong in this instance. I'm going to be using a uh, remote starter switch today because I'm by myself and can't be in two places at the same time. The very first thing you have to make sure of is that your tranny is in park or neutral. And a four or five speed is, is that, you know, if you have a manual transmission, it's in neutral as well. And chalking the wheels is a good, great idea. You should chalk the wheels front and back. Uh, if you have a B&M shifter, and it has a lockout for park and reverse, then go to the shifter and make sure it's locked in park. Try to move the vehicle manually. I'm making sure the parking pole in the tranny has it locked and the vehicle won't move. I don't know how many times you hear of it, but every year people are crushed between the car and their bench. You know, they'll pull it into the shop up to the bench and, uh, you know, either a neutral safety switch is not working properly, or, you know, they didn't check. You know, you, like this is a cold fire up. So it's going to be revving at between 15 and 1800 RPM. You can imagine if that caught and that thing was in gear. Oh, yeah. And you're standing in front of it. You're going to be a hurting unit. So you never cut corners when you're dealing with the remote starting switch. You know, it's just not a not a great idea. So if you want to test your, your neutral safety switch in your car, just go to your car, sit in it, and uh, put it in drive, and then turn the key all the way to the start position. Nothing should happen. If it cranks, you know, make sure your foot's on the brake in case it cranks. But I know in this car, we got a hell of a wiring problem in this car. Half of it's done, half of it's not done. I expect that the neutral safety switch does not work in this car. So you have to be very, very careful. On the right is a GM starter. Solenoids on the starter. On the left is a uh, solenoid for Ford, which is usually on the inner fender on the passenger side by the battery. And you're looking for the S terminal. On this GM started the S terminal is marked right here. 
and on the Ford, it's right here, it's marked right here. Here's the way it should look on a GM starter. You push that black button on the switch and uh, it's going to fire. You have to, if you, if, you, if you ever wanted to do this and you were like setting valves or something like that and you just wanted to crank the motor over, just don't turn the ignition on. It'll just crank it over, you know. But if you want it to start, put the ignition on. This is the way it should look on a Ford solenoid. You've got it on the, you've got this on the S terminal. This is coming from the battery. And on the other side of the solenoid, that cable goes down to the starter. But you just have to put it on the battery side, the cable coming from the battery. And once you hit this black button, it's going to start. If the ignition's on, the motor will start. All right, it's showtime with this neutral with this remote starting switch. Make sure you're not standing in front of the vehicle. Make sure it's in park. Make sure you've cut no corners. Doesn't sound very good. Better check the spark plug wiring.
Well, the good news is there's no valve train damage, no bent push rods, rockers look fine, springs, felt the back of the springs, everything's fine on every single one, no bent push rods, very pleased about that, let me tell you. But uh, what I did find was that the number six, which would be, this is a four, number six hole, but on a Chevy it'd be the number three hole, and the plug was just lying there. You know, it was, the boot was hardly even on the plug. I mean, it was, there was about an inch, an inch and a half separating. Uh, all the plugs on the left bank, the driver's side bank of the motor, were loose. And three of the wires were crossed. Uh, this would be five, no, six, seven, and eight were all crossed. So on a Chevy, that'd be three, five, seven. Anyway, no damage. It runs. And that's a good thing. A very good thing. This thing might be a Ford. But I love this little car. It's a runner. Don't mind it at all. Let's get it on. 